And Herb Schlosser became the president of NBC. NBC was really in the, down the tubes in terms of entertainment programming. Julian Goodman ran the network, great newsman, did a great job, but Julian Goodman, in my judgment, didn't understand entertainment programming. And the thing just kind of went down the tube. We had the best ratings of any NBC affiliate. We had the best clearances of any NBC affiliate. They put my good friend Herb Schlosser in charge of NBC, made him president. Herb Schlosser is a great broadcaster. He was a great network operator. He's a great man and a great friend. He was put in charge and made president. I went to New York. I was going to take my first trip to England. I went on a, went on a KOB trip to England. KOB used to take an annual trip with customers. They still do. <clears throat> and I stopped by and I visited Herb Schlosser. And I went up and saw Edgar, Edgar Griffith, who was the head of RCA. And he gave me a videotape recorder, first one I ever had. He, said, oh, he showed it to me. Oh, this great. I'll send it to you. And I had a long talk with him. And I said, you know, uh, Mr. Griffith, it, you don't just step into the network and change things overnight. It takes time to become a successful network president. And I, and I know a lot of affiliates, know that Herb Schlosser has what it takes, and he will be a successful network president. Just give him the time. He said, don't worry about it. He'll have all the time it takes to get the job done. I, and I, at that same day, I had lunch with Don Mercer, who at that time was the head of affiliate relations. We'd never asked for a rate increase. And I, this is an inside story about television. Never asked for a rate increase. And I said, Don, you know, we have the best ratings in the network. We haven't had a rate, rate increase for years and years and years. And we've got great clearances. I'd like to have you take a look at our structure. And you do whatever's fair. And I left it at that, went off to England. Came back, I think it was in February. The announcement came out that Edgar Griffiths had fired Herb Schlosser and that Herb Schlosser was gone and they're bringing in Fred Silverman. And ABC had been knocking on our door for a long time, and, uh, uh, Bob Fountain and Jim Duffy. And we would always turned them away. I, I never heard back from Don Mercer, never heard Boo, and did not like what they did to Herb Schlosser. And then Mr. Silverman came to see me with David Adams. Fred Silverman became the member of Super Train. He became the head of NBC. And Fred Silverman is a very accomplished producer of television programming. But, you know, running a network is a lot different than being a television producer. And Fred Silverman got on an airplane with uh, 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 David Adams and came out here to visit my dad, Ralph Dolan, who was the station manager, and myself to tell us why we should not switch networks. And they offered us two things. They offered us a bunch of baloney. We're going to be number one less than a year, which we knew was hogwash. ABC without me is going to fail. That was what Fred Silverman told me. And we're going to offer you money. You know, I said, I didn't ask for money. I talked to Don Mercer and said, you look at our record and you do what's fair. And now you're coming to us saying, stick with us and we'll pay you money. Now, on the other hand, what was, what was uh, ABC, Jim Duffy, and Bob Fountain saying to us? They were saying, in, re in response to my dad's question, how are you going to do without Fred Silverman? They said, we're going to miss him terribly. He's a really first-rate, highly qualified television executive. And we can't guarantee you we're going to be number one, and we're not offering you money. What we're offering you is a chance to be part of a growing network that's going to listen to your needs and concerns, in which we hope and believe will be number one. And we're going, to, we're going to build our network based on loyalty. We switched back to NBC, and NBC was offering us money, and they were firing all the good people. They brought in a chairman, Jane, I don't remember what the heck her name was, didn't know anything about, knew nothing about broadcasting. So we switched. David Adams wrote me a letter. I still have the letter in longhand, very shortly after, and he said, told us, Stan, you did the right thing in leaving NBC. I wish I could. Isn't that something? And I've got the letter. It was a very hard decision because he'd had so many friends at NBC for so many years. We were the number one NBC affiliate in the country, the first one ever. We were very proud of it. We were very proud of our association with David Sarnoff, who by that time was gone, and Tom Sarnoff I thought the world of. 
Bob Sarnoff, I didn't think was that great an executive. I think he screwed up the network also. And uh, interestingly, and I, you know, I hate to get personal, but he's dead and gone. I remember once when I was on the affiliates board and Hod Grahams from St. Louis was the chairman, he was from KSD. And we went to an affiliates meeting at the Beverly Hilton Hotel and they gave us a plaque and wanted us to give it to Bob Sarnoff in appreciation from, as a token of appreciation from the affiliates for the great work he'd done. And we all got said, what in the hell is this all about? But some of the senior members on the board said, well, we better do it. So at the luncheon, we made this presentation at Sarnoff, which was given to us by NBC. Isn't that something? To Bob Sarnoff, not Tom. Tom always has been the, the one... Uh... Tom's a very solid guy. Hiding in the back, yeah, but yep. always a gentleman. A gentleman and a very solid guy. Well, Bob Sarnoff was a gentleman, too. But he was a guy that came out of doing documentaries. He was made famous by you know, Victory at Sea. Great documentary series. But he didn't run the network, right? Too many people were telling him what to do. Bob Kintner was a great network president. He was a drunk, but boy, could he run a network. I remember meetings with Bob Kintner. That's when I smoked. He always had a bowl on, his, on the coffee table about this big, you know, big... Crystal ball, loaded with cigarettes. And you could reach in plenty kind of cigarettes. I was great when I was a smoker. He was a great programming genius, that guy, Bob Kintner. So we switched networks, and we went to ABC.